Sheffield Wednesday might just be the biggest mess in English football. Bottom of the championship with one of the worst owners in professional football. Since taking over in 2015, Dejon Chansiri has gotten Sheffield Wednesday relegated because of financial breaches, firing a coach weeks after he got them promoted to the championship. And now he says he refuses to sell the club, but he's also not going to be investing any more money into it, mainly because he's in debt. So we are kicking him out of Hills I'm buying Sheffield Wednesday and I am going to make them Premier League champions. Very excited to take control of Sheffield Wednesday and rescue them. This default starting 11 we do have at Sheffield Wednesday is kind of hilarious. Do they actually have a striker playing right back in real life? But it is clear we have got some work to do if we are going to survive relegation in the championship. As an owner, I want to invest in the future whilst also maintaining that we are competitive in the now. It's a tough line to balance, but the signing of Brandon Vazquez from my favorite MLS club, FC Cincinnati. Yes, I'm in pain after the weekend's result, but result aside, we're getting Brandon Vazquez from FCC as a striker that can hopefully help us survive relegation and also be an asset for the next half a decade. I'm also really desperate to cash in on a lot of the players that the previous ownership brought in that no longer fit the plans that we have for the club. Will Vault falls into this category. We sell him for 880,000 pounds. As on the very same day, we sign our first defender, Logan Costa, officially a Sheffield Wednesday player. Previous owner also let a lot of players' contracts just go year to year, so we're going to have to spend a lot of money reinvesting into players' contracts if we want to keep them around. Like, genuinely, there is like 10 players that are on contracts more than just one year. There are a few decent young prospects, though. I want to see how these guys go. Malik Wilkes off to Alaves for 12 months. We cash out on Callum Patterson for £690,000. And another player loaned out, Musaba off to Gang for the year. There is still so much business I want to do though, lads. A million pounds for Michael Smith and a tidy little three quarters of a mil there for Dominique Iorfa. And 990,000 pounds here as we look to really make a young center back combo work. We desperately needed new reinforcements on the right wing and left wing. So we've signed ourselves a new starting right winger here. It's the Belgian winger, Jorbe Vertessen. Never heard of this guy before today, but the Belgian is joining us here from PSV. And we are bringing a man down here from the Premier League in search of more game time, which he is not getting at his former club. Kevin Shade joining us here from Brentford. Very, very excited to see what this kid can do with some more game time. We did pay 5.2 mil for him. My expectations for this guy are extremely low, but our 59 rated goalkeeper, Pierce Charles, is off on loan for the year. Our first transfer window as Sheffield Wednesday owner is in the book. Some of the lads, though, are already unhappy. Come on, man. Surely this is better than the previous owner. Ownership. I'm going to have to manage that, but hopefully we have enough to survive in the championship. Let's see how we're tracking halfway through the first season. But lads, if you are enjoying this video and the new ownership at Sheffield Wednesday and you aren't already subscribed, make sure you scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. All right, we're in a little bit of a crisis, lads. We are bottom of the league, just like Wednesday are, are in real life. As ownership, we're going to have to pour as much money as possible into this side here in January if we are going to pull off a great escape. Seven points from safety. We need a big window here. And it's already off to a bad start. Marvin Johnson joining Konya Sport on a free. And we have lost two lone players in Diaby and Jeff Hendrick. We're coming out and trying to make some big signings, trying to have the mentality of a team that is higher up the table. Ryan Sessignon, Ange Postacoglu wants him out of Tottenham. And we are going to use that to our advantage. A massive improvement here to our back line. Ryan Sessignon, now a Sheffield Wednesday player. I really wanted us to have Barry Bannan as the starting attacking midfielder for our first season in charge, almost like as a courtesy to him. He's the club captain, but we don't have that luxury anymore. We are in a time of crisis. So we're going to make a big signing at the attacking midfield role. Hong Hyung Suk is joining us here from Gank. Rather Ghent. Reese James is out of the club. We have sold him to Hibs for a million pounds. And we are going to use that one million pounds to bring Lucas Fabianski in. We need a goalkeeper that is higher rated this year. We're going to sign him from West Ham for a mil. I'm praying, man. I'm praying that we he can help us. Please, Lucas. This truly has been an all or nothing window. Are we going to stay up? Oh, my God. We did it. We survived. We survived. We survived. Four points clear. 
our January spending spree has saved us from relegation, saved us probably our job, and saved us from potentially having to sell the club again. Ipswich, Plymouth Argyle, and Birmingham City all relegated. And meanwhile, as we scroll up the table, Leicester and Southampton are going to the Prem, but it feels like we are so far away from being in that conversation. Man City take down Fulham to win the FA Cup. Newport County made it to the semi-finals. Fair play. And Liverpool win the Carabao. Didn't expect to see them in the championship playoff final. I would love for them to get promoted back to the Premier League like they have been in this simulation. Brandon Vazquez was our savior this season though, lads. In a pretty miserable season, Vazquez has bagged himself 19 goals and four assists. That is the FC Cincinnati difference. But we are gonna be losing a heap of players here. Some of them on loan like Buckley and Vazquez. Some of them retiring like Lee Gregory. Barry Bannan wouldn't resign a contract and is heading elsewhere. And then players like Brennan and Fusia are just, I'm letting them go. What a ridiculous first season as Sheffield Wednesday owner. But the future looks bright, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move in to season two. Season two begins and so does the clean out. Akin Famawo, this guy almost got us fired last year by how much he wanted to leave. We've finally sold him. But we are going to make our first signing of the season. Buckley leaving on loan at the end of last year. He's loaned Bill expiring definitely left a massive gap in the midfield, which is why we are going to sign the midfielder Leighton Clarkson here from Aberdeen. 6.4 million pounds to bring him back to the English footballing pyramid. Doubling down on the midfield improvements here this year, changing the formation up and getting another midfielder in, the Dutchman Thomas Vandenbelt joining us here from final. Sending the young striker Gasama off on loan and raising some revenue now. Juan Delgado off for 840k. And after his one year loan move, we're going to cash in here on Wilkes. We need the money. So we're going to sell him to Spezia for 1.6 mil, which is going to help us finance the signing of a new right back here in Ben Johnson. Another player making the step down from the Premier League. The Sheffield Wednesday in, so in search of more game time. I feel like that's my whole strategy at this point cannot afford to be in a relegation battle again. This team on paper is too good to be in a relegation fight. I don't know if we've got the squad right now to be in a Premier League promotion race, but we can't be seeing red come January 1st. All right, we're not seeing red, but we're not seeing green either. We currently sit 15th here. We are not safe from relegation. Only 11 points clear of Rotherham United, which is a much better position than we found ourselves in this time last year. But this is gonna be a slow grind to get ourselves up the table. It doesn't feel like we have much to do or we could do here in the January window, nor do we really have a crazy amount of money to spend, but we are going to bring in Elijah Reed, a free agent attacking midfielder here as a backup, just in case anything happens because we do not have much depth there. I am hoping this doesn't come to bite us in the backside come the end of the season. I'll take it, lads. I'll take it. 14th here in the championship. It is one of the hardest leagues to get out of. The championship is one of the most difficult leagues in world football, let alone world sport. We're slowly pushing towards the top half of the table. 57 points. Relegation this year was 43. Watford almost went down, but it's Peterborough, Barnsley, and Rotherham saying goodbye. But the new North Star is going to be Leeds United, who get promoted along side our crosstown rivals in Sheffield United. Liverpool win the FA Cup, Newcastle win the Carabao, and Middlesbrough are up to the Prem. Another big season for Brandon Vazquez, 18 goals once again. Our attack absolutely crushed it. 14 here for Hong Kyun Suk and 12 for Vertessen. We're starting to build a side that needs to be pushing for promotion with players in the mid to high 70s all around the board. Saying goodbye to Lucas Fabianski. He helped us survive relegation last year and for that we are going to be so grateful. And Liam Palmer also retiring from football. So I know one thing for certain, we're going to need a new top quality goalkeeper next year. And honestly, I want to push for promotion. There has been a lot of chopping and changing in this video so far in between the sticks, but we need a goalkeeper who can be our shot stopper, our rock at the back for the foreseeable future. Anthony Patterson will be joining us on a cut price deal. At least it was a cut price deal before the game nuked his value. A player departure here as Bambo Diaby is off to Norwich City for 1.1 million pounds. And another player from our defense packing his bags permanently. The 30-year-old defender, Paul Valentin, off to the Turkish League. I am totally okay with that because I knew I wanted to sign a new starting 11 defender here. 
The ginger hair and lack of a soul might have been a bit of a giveaway for some of you guys, but Sepp Vandenberg is going to be joining us. The Dutch defender signing on from Liverpool for 8.8 .8 million pounds. Definitely need a little more squad depth in certain positions though. The first signing is going to be Connor Metcalf, the Australian joining us here from St. Pauli. And then the English right back, Jordan Lawrence Gabriel, 26 years of age, making the step up from League One to the Championship as he joins us from Blackpool. This season is huge, lads. This team needs to be pushing for Premier League promotion. Surely we can get Sheffield Wednesday up to the top flight. Come on, lads. Come on, lads. Let's see how we're doing come January 1st. It's not the worst position in the world to be, lads. I would love to have had a green tick next to our name, but we sit 11th right now here on the 1st of January. We are nine points out of the playoff pitch. We've overcome bigger point deficits in this video alone. We had to come over, overcome a bigger deficit to survive relegation. Can we overturn it to get ourselves into the playoffs? Potentially even automatic promotion because this is an extremely, extremely tight top half. I've got to keep faith in the squad that we have built so far. There is not many areas we can improve with the money we have. I need to hope the foundations I laid earlier in the series are going to help us out. Our slow start cost us, lads. Our slow start cost us four points away from the playoffs. If we got onto the playoffs, anything could have happened, but we have finished eighth here in our third season with Sheffield Wednesday. We're getting closer, lads. We're scoring goals. Man, four points away from Preston and Millwall. Team's getting relegated, though. Everton and Burnley on 93 and 90 points, respectively. And heading down to League One are Birmingham. Sorry, it's not Birmingham. It's Watford, Derby, and Cardiff. A Manchester Derby in the FA Cup final. And Liverpool win the Carabao. And that could have been us. That could have been us. But Wolves have won the championship playoff final. Brandon Vazquez is too good at this point to be playing in the championship. 22 goals, 83 overall. We're going to have to expect some big money offers to come in for him next season. But our top goal scorer this year was Jorbe Vertessen. 23 goals, zero assists. Our front three is killing it. Cameron Dawson off to Stoke City and George Byers off to free agency. Surely we're going to be one of the favorites to get promoted next year. We need to do some solid work to guarantee it. We need a statement signing, somebody to push us over the edge into a contender, into one of the top teams and take us from being outside of the playoffs to number one. We've signed the Polish defender, Jakob Kirill here from Arsenal. He was a standout player for Arsenal in the back end of last year in real life. And now he is coming to Hillsborough. This season is quality over quantity. And we've just picked ourselves up a quality center half. Of course, we need a backup goalkeeper now. Edward McGinty. This isn't going to make the front page of the paper. But the Irish keeper is going to provide an okay backup option. We're dealing with what we can do here for financially. Edward McGinty making the move from Oxford United. A huge season is needed here, lads. We need our star players to step up for us and get Sheffield Wednesday to the Premier League. Come on, you owls. God, it is not safe. We're sitting second, seven points behind Luton, but we have got essentially half the competition breathing down our necks. A loss or two could take us out of automatic promotion and potentially even out of the playoffs altogether. And we have lost Deshaun Bernard. He wasn't starting for the past two years, but he was a handy backup to have, leaving on a free to River Plate as he refused to sign a new contract. Oh my god. We are getting some massive offers in as well for Brandon Vazquez. We could cash in on him right now, but we need every player on deck for this hopeful promotion run. But we are going to use the departure of Bernard as a way to future-proof and improve our squad depth in total. So, a Finnish young centre-back here in Tavo Kinnanen could be a great backup down the line and then just the squad depth pick up here in Will Forrester, the Englishman and the Finnishman. What do you call the Finnishman? Sounds like a movie title, but the two of them are going to be joining us for the back end of the season. Come on, lads. After four grinding seasons here in the championship, we have got Sheffield Wednesday into the Premier League. Our ownership has proven the difference. Ourselves and Leeds United are up to the Premier League. Things kind of split apart in the second half of the 
season. And I mean, it would have taken a loss, a lot for us to fall out of the playoffs. The teams that are going to be two divisions below us now heading into next season will be Charlton, Bolton, and Lincoln. Only take down West Ham in the FA Cup final. We actually made it to the round of 16, which is our best performance in the FA Cup so far. And Liverpool did win the Carabao. We lost to Man City on penalties. We are starting to get some good work done here in terms of domestic football. Damn, Luton Town didn't join us. Luton, who were top of the table in January, got eliminated by Middlesbrough, who ended up beating Coventry on pens to join us and Leeds in the Premier League next year. But Tesson is proven to be an absolute hero here in the past few seasons. He is having a great little period in his career as the NPC's pick 28 goals. And we're going to have a big question next year. Brandon Vazquez, do we keep him or do we sell him? 87 overall. Our goal is to win a Premier League. We could really use that in handy next year. Or we could sell him and get a shit ton of money to help improve the entire squad. Big questions. Unfortunately, though, Josh Windass will not be joining us in the Premier League. He is retiring here at the end of the fourth season. Bring on the Premier League, though, in season five. Surviving in the Premier League is one of the toughest things to do as a newly promoted side. We need to spend every single pound in our transfer budget wisely. Attacker signing number one is the attacking midfielder Malik Tillman, the American joining us here from Valencia. And we're making an upgrade in between the sticks. It is a regen goalkeeper here, the Uruguayan goalkeeper Santiago Martinez joining us from Leverkusen for 21.1 million pounds. And his value goes up after we sign him. You'll love to see it. There is still business to be done though. We need to raise as much money as possible. So Anthony Patterson, it's been a good couple of years having you in between the sticks, mate, but it is now time to say goodbye. And the same sentiment falls hit Hong Kyung Suk. He got us through a rough patch, but he is headed now to Newcastle for 16 and a half mil. And we are going to use all of that money to make a solid upgrade here to the midfield. I am feeling significantly more excited about our chances of survival this year as we sign the Spaniard Alex Biena from Bournemouth. 40.8 million pounds for his services. We've assembled a really good team. I'm feeling confident about our chances to survive this Premier League relegation battle. But just because we've built a good team on paper doesn't mean it's going to survive. I've seen some very good teams get relegated from the Premier League in my time. And I'm not trying to join. I'm not trying to join that list. January 1st is going to be a really interesting time. I'm cool with this. I am really cool with this. And that's because, I mean, I'm assuming we might have been turning a lot of draws into losses, but I'm going to go with the fact that we've been turning draws into wins. Eight wins, one draw, 10 losses, 25 points, 10th in the table right now. But to be fair, oh, okay, to be fair, we're only six points clear of Leicester and we are only 12 points away from European football. Not that it's the goal. The goal is to win the Premier League today. We are 15 points away from Arsenal. A lot could change for the second half of the season, depending on if we do do anything for this January window. But we have started to get some offers in here for Vazquez. Some of them were during the simulation. AC Milan have come in. We could get up to 182 million pounds for Vazquez. Oh, that could really change everything. We could invest all of that money into a whole new starting 11. But then we would be without Brandon Vazquez, our star striker. I can't do it right now. I can't do it. We haven't survived relegation. I, I would kick myself if I sold Brandon Vazquez and we had a stinker of a second half and got relegated. I can't do it, lads. Not right now. Brandon Vazquez needs to stay for this season. I think we made the right call not selling him. We've finished 11th here in our first Premier League season and I am totally fine with that. I am totally fine with a mid-table year. Seven points clear, 12th place Bournemouth. Brighton, Burnley and Middlesbrough go down. We ended up being 21 points clear of Brighton, so that's a great second half. To be fair, we weren't even close to European football or the Premier League title either. Man City winning the league with 81 points. Man City also also won the FA Cup. We made it to the semi-finals of that competition. We're getting close to some silverware. And Chelsea have beaten Fulham in a West London derby to win the Carabao Cup. My mind's not really on European football. It would be nice if we could compete in, in it, but I want a Premier League title. That is the goal with Sheffield Wednesday. Vertessen was the man that kept us up this year. Not necessarily Brandon Vazquez. Only nine goals.
goals for Brandon Vazquez, but Kevin Shade and Jorbe Vitesen are our heroes here in the Premier League. That gives me a lot to consider heading into next season. Pierce Charles, the young fella, 62 rated, 22 year old goalkeeper. I'm okay letting him go. Premier League survival has been achieved, lads. Let's keep it going in the next season, season number six. Well, that just made my mind up. Brandon Vazquez has submitted a transfer request. All right, so we're going to have to try selling him for as much as possible. I mean, he didn't have a great year last year, but still, that's an 89 rated player. I'm going to have to get as much money in and try to build this team up as much as possible. Chelsea have come in here 157 mil. I want to try seeing if we can get up to the 190s. Bagging an extra 40 mil would mean that's another player we could get. We would have 260. 74 mil if we could pull this off. We could build a title winning roster if we can pull this off here. 197 mil, they say 157. Come on, Poch. Say 187. Come on, Poch. 157 again and the tension's up the top. You know what? I'm sure there's going to be another club coming for him. I'm not going any lower right now than 177 and they're going to walk out of the room. Whatever. PSG have come in now. They've got money. Getting right in there again. I'm getting up to the 195 mark. Come on, PSG. 169 with a 5% sell on clause that's better than chelsea let's see if we can get 189 come on psg psg say 181 i am totally fine with that 181 million pounds for brandon vazquez and now everton have come in with an offer for him i'm sorry everton i've got to reject that I, honestly it's probably good that we don't sell him to a premier league club and there it is he's been an absolute superstar for us but brandon vazquez is gone and now not only do we have to find ourselves a new striker we need to build out this squad and give ourselves the best chance possible of getting up the Premier League table. We bag ourselves a new striker. It is the Senegalese striker, Nicholas Jackson. Very excited to see what he can do for us up top. Once again, back in the Premier League, Nicholas Jackson, welcome to Sheffield Wednesday. We pick him up from Leverkusen for 54.9 million pounds, which means there are still like 130 million pounds remaining from the Vazquez sale. It's been a long time time coming, but we have finally got ourselves an upgraded right back. Johnson was good for us at the right back role, but we needed a superstar. We've gone ahead and brought in another four. I promise I'm trying to not sign only Chelsea, former Chelsea players, but another former Chelsea player. If this Vazquez money is working wonders for us, we're going to pick up a generational talent here for the defense. Fabio Garcia, Brazilian center back from Bayer Leverkusen, potentially the regen of Thiago Silva. 86 rated at age 21. Unbelievable. Wow. Welcome to Sheffield, mate. We could be anything this year, lads. Absolutely anything. Our lowest rated players are Clarkson and Martinez at 83. This is such a balanced squad, honestly. Please, please have us in a title hunt come January 1st. Oh, I've got an internal debate, lads. We're fourth. We're 10 points off the Premier League title. Chelsea are top of the league, but their team is unbelievable. I mean, they have a 30-year-old Mbappe in his prime. We're going to have to put together a special set second half of the season if we're any chance of even getting close to them. Or they're going to have to have one of the greatest choke jobs in Premier League history. Personally, I'm hoping that we can combine both of those. I don't want to do it, lads, but we're without no other choice. We need to make a big midfield signing. Leighton Clarkson added to the transfer list. And unfortunately, we have sold him, lads. Leighton Clarkson off to Manchester United for £56 million. He wasn't my first option, I'm going to be entirely honest. I tried to go in for Enzo Fernandez and Fabio Moretti, but we did not have enough money for them. However, we have enough money here for still one of the world's best center midfielders at this point. This is a great problem to have when he is the best you can get. Ryan Gravenberch is joining us, and it is a real nice addition to the midfield. Gone from an 83 in Clarkson to an 87 in Gravenberch. Let's check in and see how we're going at the end of the season. Three games remain in our Premier League season. We're sitting fourth on 60 points. This may come down to the final match day, but not to win the title because Chelsea have already got it wrapped up. They are 14 points clear at the top. Are we going to be playing Champions League football next year? I actually prefer not to play European football because it means we have less fixture congestion, but the money would definitely help us. So I'll see you guys after match day 38. We ended up having two wins and a draw to round out the season, which I mean, if we didn't, we might... That, that top seven is unbelievable. We end up finishing third here though with Sheffield Wednesday in season six. 
Chelsea with Mbappe and all their studs, top of the table. And in the relegation zone, it's Leicester, Everton, and Sheffield United. Man United win an FA Cup. Man United also win a Carabao Cup. Did they beat Newcastle in both of them? They did. That is a tough year to be a Newcastle fan. What are the odds of us not winning a single trophy in this whole video and our first trophy that we win being the Premier League? I'm honestly surprised Vorte Vitesse isn't into the 90s yet. He's going up plus two every year, but he is having an unbelievable, like not even season, unbelievable career. Also, I'm really impressed with Nicholas Jackson. First year in the club and he bags himself 23 goals. That is definitely improvement on Vazquez last season. But for the first time in this video, we're not losing a single player at the end of the year. It is all steam ahead in season seven. I want that Premier League time. Champions League money hits different. We've been given 190 million pounds from the board, which I guess is from me as well. Maybe I should just give us like a billion pounds. My game plan, I want a world-class attacking midfielder spend around 100, 110 mil on that. And then I want to get another center back if I could spend 70 to 80 on that. And then if we have any money left over, maybe a backup goalkeeper, but attacking mid and center back are the two priorities. Knowing that we have to compete with that unbelievable Chelsea side has just put another fire underneath me. We have just done ourselves a huge favor here, lads. Arda Gula is going to be joining us. The big value, the big the big favor is his value is 89 and a half million pounds. We get him for 79 and a half million pounds, 12 months remaining on his deal at United. And we have brought the Turkish attacking midfielder to Hillsborough. And that has allowed us to splash the cash more than I anticipated on a center back. I'm trying to weaken other Premier League sides whilst we strengthen ours. And we make the monster signing. The defender of all defenders at this point, William Saliba, is going to be joining us here at Sheffield Wednesday. And we did pay 92.7 million pounds to make it happen. We spent so much in the other positions that I haven't been able to go in for a backup goalkeeper. It's okay though. Hopefully Martinez can hang out at the back for us. But can this team win us? a Premier League title at Sheffield Wednesday, and will we be the best owner in the Premier League? Also, it would be ironic and kind of annoying. I might just change the, uh, change the objective in editing, but if we won the Champions League and completed a Champions League rebuild before we won the Premier League, I would be quite upset and also proud of the lads. I was going to show the final day of the Premier League season, but that wasn't necessary. Because despite drawing to Tottenham on the final day of the season, we have won the Premier League title with Sheffield Wednesday and have proven ourselves as the best owner in English football. Crazy as well, Kevin Shade was our hero here in the seventh and final season. But there you go, lads. Hopefully that delivered some happiness in a pretty bleak time for Sheffield Wednesday fans. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.